Vintage Volkswagens are not typically known for their top speed. But our combi has been designed a little differently. So we thought, whilst we're here in the land of unlimited speed, let's hit Germany's famous autobahn to see just how fast this combi can go. And our face to the floor. 70, 73. Okay, overtaken by a smart car. We are attempting to drive around the world. You guys are invited too, so subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. When we first set eyes on this 1973 combi in the Arizona desert and committed to transforming him into an off-grid mobile studio capable of driving on the world's most challenging roads, we knew that we needed a reliable engine. So we teamed up with CB Performance in California to design and build a vintage engine with a modern twist. Years of research and industry-leading engineering techniques were employed to build the most advanced air-cooled engine possible for our unique project. The primary objective of this engine was to be strong and to run cool. 1776cc special cylinder heads were selected so that this combi could handle the demands of our World Overland Expedition. In the lab at birth, our custom engine produced almost double the horsepower of a standard air-cooled combi engine. Now, our recommended highway cruising speed is a modest 55 miles per hour, or 90 kilometers an hour. But let's be clear, high speed was never the objective with this project. However, we thought it was about time that we plucked up the courage hit the Autobahn in Germany and put the pedal to the metal to find out just how fast this combi will go. The Autobahn, Germany's federal highway system, is widely known for having no speed limit. However, the truth is only part of the Autobahn has unrestricted speed limits. In all cases, the advised maximum speed is 130 km per hour or 81 miles per hour. Although driving faster than this is not illegal and is regularly done by modern motorists. We plan to see if we can reach that limit in our vintage Volkswagen, if we can find safe conditions to do so. I think we're going to have to call this uh, top speed test on account of bad weather. Obviously, slippery surfaces are not the best. Our braking distance is probably 20 times longer than all these modern German vehicles, and I'm certainly not putting ourselves at risk. So uh, let's go find a dry patch of road somewhere else. Two days later, in the south of Germany, conditions cleared, and we found ourselves back on the autobahn for one final top speed attempt. We're doing like our top speed and they're still flying past us. Okay, I'm gonna go for a top speed test in the combi. We normally cruise at 55 miles an hour. Let's see how we go. 60, 65, I got my face to the floor. 70, that's 110 kilometers an hour, 115. Still can't catch up with the car in front. I'm getting overtaken by a smart car. 73. All right, that's 120 kilometers an hour. That is actually the speed limit in this section. So I've got to back off. That's 75 miles an hour. Woo! That's probably not fast for most of you, but I tell you, in this car, 
it feels fast. Yeah. To say the Germans can drive as fast as they want on the Autobahn, they're really respectful of the rules um, when there's traffic or there is a, a speed limit imposed. I see less speeding here than in other countries. Perhaps that's because they are given like a certain level of trust to drive responsibly um, and to drive as fast as they feel they can do so comfortably and safely. With the Alps mountain range fast approaching, we were rapidly running out of flat ground. This was unfortunately as fast as we could go. But then we got one final chance to floor it. Driving fast isn't in our nature and we're generally not in a rush to get anywhere, but the seasons are changing. And for us, it's time to make some big decisions about what happens next. Whilst we're traveling in 2020, we start every day with a quick check to see what the COVID situation is, where we are and where we're headed. And um, unfortunately, it looks like the next destination of Austria and Switzerland is off the table because they're advising against all but essential travel to those locations. So looking at the charts, coronavirus is kicking off big time here in Europe and um, it's definitely apparent that we're in a second wave. So we need to be choosing our location for lockdown 2.0. We recently had to leave the Czech Republic due to the pandemic. And all around us, the situation was definitely getting worse and travel kind of seems unwise. We thought for us, Germany would be the last country for this season of travel, but that was until we met these guys. Local combi crew members, Niels and Connie. They've traveled together in Europe in their slightly more modern Volkswagen. It's a 2003 T4 model uh, and it was a multi-van uh, in former times. Uh, I stripped it completely uh, throughout all that multi-van stuff inside of it and uh, put it in a 1995 California interior. We are located in a city called Wolfratshausen and uh, it, the good thing about it is that it is so near uh, to the border to Austria and Italy. It is very closely to the Alps and it is uh, so much to do and you're seeing different kinds of nature and really very, very vast variety uh, of the nature. Although the nature is beautiful in South Germany, whilst it was raining, we went in search of a Bavarian experience indoors. So, genau, this is the liquor. Mm. I like it. <laughs> Your face there, try to I'm trying like... not to squint. <laughs> it's just very strong. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I just so can't hard. keep a straight face when I swallow. It's very strong. <laughs> I can't believe that. Yeah. It's, it's How strong. strong is this one? It, it is 42%. It's like when you inhale, it goes straight up through your skull and comes out the <laughs> other side. Germany, like most European countries, has a culture with many traditions surrounding food. From what time you can eat a sausage to what drinks follow a meal. 
The drinking of schnapps is probably the most commonly practiced custom and usually follows a heavy meal to help with digestion. Or if you're like us, it's just a way to pass the afternoon. Of all the countries and all the alcohols I've tried, Germany definitely gets the prize for the most generous. Whew, it's like a free bar in here. Definitely time for a walk. It's very traditional in Germany, not only drinking beer, it's also very traditional having a good schnapps. You want to try it? We took a tour of the famous Lantenhammer distillery to learn more about the process and also some of the other interesting spirits that they produce. Oh yeah, it's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't get very pleasant. <laughs> and we got to sample some of the special stuff too. We are definitely taking a bottle of Lantern Hammer with us. The hard part is deciding oh, okay. which one. This one? Yeah. Combi size. Combi size, yeah. <laughs> nice. Is that the raspberry schnapp? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I've had so many schnapps I can't tell anymore. <laughs> The schnapps is a nice custom, but our favourite Bavarian custom is the breakfast. The famous Weisswurst sausage. We'd had it before, but we just could not get enough. Traditionally eaten with a soft pretzel and delicious sweet mustard, it is strictly a morning meal. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Are you not supposed to do it with a knife? Don't toast it with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> with a knife. What are you supposed to do it with then? Your tea. Your tea. Oh, they would suck it. <laughs> yeah. Are you not going to show us the traditional yeah, way of doing it? I can't. Come on, I can't. No, I no, can't. No, we can't. Ben and I have been buying these sausages and eating them with the skin on, and we didn't realise that you're not supposed to eat them with the skin on. According to Bavarian custom, the vice first must not hear the noon bells of the church tower. When we arrived here to meet Niels and Connie, we thought that it was not possible to continue our travels at this time. But after hearing their stories of travels across the border, we had to look again at the map. There's definitely no straight path between Germany and Australia right now. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It was already difficult to plan a route to Australia with a pandemic, it's impossible. <laughs> Yeah, numbers are rising a little bit there. The next countries on our route are Austria and Switzerland, but there is currently a travel advisory to avoid all but essential travel to these countries. Because it's not just getting there, it's, it's getting back. It's getting back, yes. Getting out of the country once you, you're in. Yeah. You don't know what tomorrow brings, yeah, that there could be political consequences in closing borders or strict rules uh, concerning tests and uh, stuff like that. However, on the other side of the mountains, Italy is still welcoming visitors and at this moment considered safe for travel. We've made a last minute decision. Italy. <laughs> it feels like a total bonus country. So excited. So, it looks like we might be able to get one more adventure out of this season, if we can make it across the Alps, that is. So I think it was the front brakes that we were smelling just then, which means the back brakes are probably slacking off. Let's we'll see if that makes a difference. But that is the story for next time. <laughs>